Do you ever feel disconnected to your business? Like it's become a replacement of your nine to five and far from the financial freedom you originally desired? Well, in today's episode, I talk with Sandy Hanrahan, business mentor from Abundant Business Training, about the rational and spiritual side of business and how you can embrace them both to have a profitable and successful business. Sandy works with women in business using her unique blend of practical knowledge and energetic magic. I know you'll love her words of wisdom around creating a holistic business and the three ways that you can make sure that you're creating a business that you love and serves you as well as your clients. Welcome to the Powerful Content Podcast, your go-to source for content creation, strategy, and business inspiration. I'm your host, Mel Daniels content strategist, coach, and speaker, empowering women across the globe to grow their business with powerful content that connects, nurtures, and converts. So if you're ready to create standout content that gets you noticed and remembered, or build an aligned audience who love you and are ready to buy from you, you're in the right place. I believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's up to you how you use it. Listen in for genuine and insightful chats with guests as well as practical tools and strategies from me. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's dive into the show. I acknowledge the Wongal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional custodians of the country that I am recording from today. I recognize their continuing connection to the land and waters. I pay my respects to elders past and present and extend that respect to all First Nation people listening today. Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to episode 121 of the Powerful Content Podcast. So lovely to have you here, and it's also so lovely to have my special guest with me today, Sandy Hanrahan from Abundant Business Training. Welcome to the podcast, Sandy. Oh, thank you, Mel. I'm super excited to be here and, uh, yeah, to chat with you today. I'm so looking forward to this conversation today, Sandy, because I think it's one that as business owners, we need to have, we need to also become more aware and enlightened about all of the parts of us that we bring to our business. So I think that this conversation is going to be a really interesting one. But before we dive into this topic, you are currently living the true digital nomad lifestyle. (laughs) I'd love for you to just talk to us a little bit about that, how it came about and what's happening in your life at the moment. Yeah, thanks, Mel. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, when I meet people and I tell people, you know, that we're traveling and this is our second year of traveling around Australia and overseas and working. And most people are like, well, how do I do it? Right. It's like, it's like the dream. And I have to pinch myself sometimes to remind myself that I am living this dream. But it really started like, you know, when our children got towards the end of school and we, you know, we found ourselves in our, you know, our four bedroom, two bathroom home and a huge garden and dog. And, you know, and we started really like thinking about what, what did we want out of our life? And we both, my husband and I are big travelers and, and we just sort of had an aha moment, really. We went on a holiday, we were living in this little, um, uh, holiday unit and we were like, for the first time in years, we had no attachment to homes or anything else and we thought what would it be like and we just started playing with that idea what would it be like to just travel around and work and and that really started the whole ball rolling and then once I get those sort of ideas I like to then you know follow the breadcrumbs of where that's going to lead and so by the time we got home our youngest son graduated from year 12 and wanted to go to Brisbane in uni and our oldest son's in Perth. And so we were in Adelaide at the time. And so we just went, why not? Like we, there was no clearer path for us right then from a timing perspective. And both of us can work remotely. We're very lucky like that. And so, yeah, we just, it took a a bit of soul searching to like sell the family home and um, decide how we were going to go. But once we started down that process, we were just got really excited about it. Mm-hmm. And, and we, it, it all fell into place. And these things I find once you're in the flow and you know, you're on the right path for yourself, 
the things just start to fall into place. And I love telling this story because it's a little bit about how, you know, these things are just meant to happen the way they do. We put our house on the market. And I had, we'd had a conversation like, what do we want to do with all our furniture? We, you know, we had a household full of furniture and my husband was like, just sell the lot, right? Let's just like keep sentimental things in like 10 plastic tubs and we'll sell everything. And if we need to start again, we'll start again. And the lady who came to look at our house, um, she put an offer in on the house and then I get a text message from the agent saying, the lady who wants to buy your house wants to know, do you want to sell all your furniture? And all your plants. And I, we were just, we were sitting at the pub and we were just started laughing. We were just like, this is the clearest sign you can have that you're in alignment with where you're heading and where it's meant to be. So what an amazing sign. Yeah. So we just laughed. At, and so, yeah, the lady bought the house and she bought all our furniture and we kept sentimental and packed it all up and yeah, away we went. So it was beautiful. And then we. Uh, you know, we had a four wheel drive already and we just bought a caravan and yeah, took the dog and away we went and just started having an adventure and it's been incredible. I've loved it. Really loved it. That is such an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing that with, with us, Sandy, because I do agree that I think that the universe works in amazing ways for us sometimes. And when we put things out there and, you know, ask for things, then often we get things in return. So that's just, I love that story so much. Now, let's just talk about a little bit about what you do. You've said that you can do everything uh, remotely, which is absolutely amazing these days. I mean, we're, we're practically all working from home, but to be able to do that whilst you're on the road as well. You are a business coach and mentor that loves the practical side of business. I know that about you <laughs> and, and your book background from corporate um, is in that space, but you also bring the energetic side of it as well. And I think this is where we can learn so much from you today, Sandy, in terms of what that actually means and what difference it can make to our business. So I think that we're pretty much both aligned in the fact where we think about there's so much noise out there, especially all the shoulds, you know, how to create content and in your space, in the business strategy space, you know, how can we to have 10K months or the six bigger business, all of those arbitrary things that are thrown out there. But what do we need to listen to in terms of all of that advice and what should we actually block out? Yeah, such a huge, um, huge question, really. There's so much in there, isn't it? There is. Really there is. Right. And I love, uh, you know, this is something that I really love talking about. And for a lot of people... We kind of, you know, we've, we've worked in the corporate world or we've had a job and we immediately jump into a business and we're just replacing like the like, right? And so we have so much noise, as you said, so much advice. And so, you know, for businesses, you, you know, if you're not too careful, you can just replace one slave relationship with another slave relationship, right? And you <laughs> well know, like, especially building a business, how much time you can like get involved in your business. And so for me, you know, I don't think business is a cookie cutter. I don't think, I think there's parts of it clearly that you do, you know, um, have a strategy for, but each of us is individual. And when I start working with people in business, um, particularly women in business, like, I think it's really important to know what, what do you want out of the business? Like for you personally as well. And it's, as you say, some people go, oh, I want a 10 K month or I want to seven figure business or I want, but that there's more underneath that for me. And so that's where I love like getting into the energetics of business as well, because it's not just about coming in and doing, making, building a successful business. And then you finally get there, you go, oh, huh, okay, I've arrived. You know, like there's so many layers there, like, and from a personal perspective, what is it that you want to achieve as a woman in your own right? And how is that, how is your business going to help you get there? So when I talk about the practicals, you know, obviously that's all about the strategy and the financial side of business and the structure and things like that. But the energetics for me, is how can you tap into your own genius? How can you really get in tune? But so you know, what's driving you, what, what is going to fulfill you as a business owner to actually go, I am just loving this journey. For me, it's not just about, hooray, I'm here. I've created a 
successful business. It's about knowing yourself as a business owner, knowing yourself, you know, as a woman who is, you know, quite usually juggling 10 things at once, right? We're a business owner, we're, you know, we're still like looking after ourselves and we've got usually got families or pets or, you know, parents or, you know, we've got lots of things going on. And so, you know, that's where we come back to like each business has its own unique blueprint. And a lot of that is tied into your, as a business owner, your zone of genius and what you actually want out of your business. And it sounds easy, but like when you're there, it's like, it can be really complex Mm -hmm. to actually start tapping into your own genius and having that conversation, you know, and that's when I say intuition, intuition is really that link between, you know, your genius zone and how to get that information out to you so that you can start using it in every day. Okay. So that was going to be my next question, actually. You mentioned you need to know yourself and understand your zone of genius in order to have a business and a life that we, that we truly love. But where do we actually start with that? Because like you said, it is such a, often such a deep and powerful way of coming to our business. And often we need a little bit of help in that respect. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, I have a coach and I have a mentor myself because, you know, I would run rings around myself because I, you know, but I mean, I, I don't want to go into the places that I don't want to go either. And I'm just like, I'm just going to stay here and swim around in this beautiful, you know, clear pool of business. Um, and so I think, you know, if you, you want to make this, your business so fulfilling that you love every day and getting up, then you have to step out of actually being in the business and you've got to spend some time on yourself. You know, you've got to really honor that time with yourself and you've got to find that, that those quiet moments to actually ask yourself questions or to actually work with somebody who you can say, well, how is your business supporting you? Or what are you getting out of the business? Or what do you really want? Um, and part of it, I think, you know, if I sort of backpedal a little bit and say, you know, we have that rational mind, you know, which quite often is all the experiences we've had today, all those things that people have told us we need to do in business and life. And we've got that whole side of our brain switched on. And then we've got that really soulful spirit side of our, you know, of who we are, that's that yearning. And that's where our genius zone sits. That's where our, you know, that path that we know, the blueprint for us to have the most amazing life sits. And so how do we get to that? And quite often it's about meeting ourselves and understanding who we actually are and what our, you know, what we really want to create. Mm-hmm. Not, and that, I can guarantee you it's not a 10K month. That's not what we want to create, right? I can give you a suitcase of $10,000. That's not what you want. You don't want a suitcase of $10,000. You won't want that $10,000 can buy you, right? That's, that's such a powerful way of looking at it. So... My next question then is how do we use our intuition to be able to help us get to that place where we actually enjoy our business, where we actually are in our zone of genius? So what role, I guess, does intuition play in that? Yeah, like intuition is really that very clear guidance in leading you towards, you know, what's going to fulfill you. And, you know, I... I had this question myself about four years ago, like, how do I tell what is intuition and what is, you know, ego? Like, it sounds the same to me sometimes. And so I went and studied, I did a year long study of, you know, how to connect with your intuition, how to learn. And so, you know, I've done many years, five years, I think now of intuition. And a lot of it is, you know, imagination and making it up. Like intuition is in its like best form when we're dreaming about what it is that we want to achieve. So say, like for me, I'm traveling around, I'm, you know, I'm working and traveling and somebody might say, oh my God, that is, you know, I really would love to have that life. Then I would say, well, you know, feel into that, like dream about that life. You know, like it might feel a bit like, oh, that's never going to happen or it's like months and months away or years and years away or whatever it is. But you can still dream. And the more you dream, the more you're sending signals, the more your intuition is going to send you just little breadcrumbs to help you get closer to what that dream is. And so it's paying attention to the little breadcrumbs. 
Oh. So for me, intuition is usually very soft and gentle, kind. It doesn't say things like, Mel, you need to get your act together. You need to do 14 social media posts tomorrow. That's not intuition. No, <laughs> intuition will be like, you know, like book a holiday or, you know, it might be something very simple. It might just be, you know, rest today, or it might be, it could be any number of things. Mm. But it, And I was just going to say, intuition often feels for many people like that gut feeling, that, that sense of something going to happen. Usually it's bad when we talk about intuition, mm. but what I'm hearing from you though, is intuition can be more about the dreams and how we can find our own way to get to those dreams without having a 10 page checklist of all the things that we need to do. Yes, that might be one of the things that we need to do, but initially it's about the dreaming and it's about the wonderment of it happening. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Like imagination is that key to intuition. Mm. And, um, it's like, you know, as I said about us selling the house, like, you know, we went away, we had a great holiday. We thought, what would this be like to live like this? Mm. Or, and it wasn't like, let's live like this for five years. It was just like, what would it be like to live like this? And then we dreamt about that and we started talking about it. And then before you know it, you're taking the next action step. Which was, well, let's get someone into a praise the house. Let, you know, and then it's like little breadcrumbs of following that thread of thought. And then before we knew it, you know, we were driving down the road, living the dream. <laughs> That's a great story. So I'm assuming, Sandy, that we, like with most things, um, using intuition or learning to use your intuition is all about practice and about using it often. Absolutely. And like people receive intuition in different ways as well. So it's like, you know, learning how, like, as you said, gut feeling, like some people mm -hmm. just have a, like a heavy or a light feeling and other people might, you know, actually hear like yes or no, or they might say, you know, ring Fred or you, somebody might pop in your head that you haven't thought about. And then you start like, oh, I wonder what they're doing. And then you, you know, you, then you reestablish a connection. Um, so quite often intuition, you know, the more that you start thinking about it and the more that you start stepping into like dreaming and imagining and really start feeling into that softness of life the more that the intuition will start coming through. So it is a bit like going to the gym, right? You, you don't go to the gym and you, go, and you use it once, you know, the weight machine once and you come out with a six pack and the intuition's like that as well. You know, like you don't suddenly go, okay, that's it. It's all here and it's all coming in. You're going to have moments where you're going to doubt whether it's intuition or, you know, I think it's to start playing with it and actually listening to that softness. And mm. part of that is learning how to, you know, just to get out of the hustle and get out of the constant noise um, and start listening to yourself, even if it's just having fun and being a bit playful. With mm. And that's a hard thing to do, I think, because like you said earlier in the episode, especially as women, we have the many hats that we wear and we are always doing all of the things and we tend to carry the mental load. So it's very difficult for us to actually make that time and space to be silent, to be still, to, you know, welcome in any thoughts. So if someone is feeling like that, that they just simply could not make time, what would be the simplest step for them to take? Yeah, I think the, you know, I hear that a lot and I used to do that myself a lot. I'm too busy mm -hmm. to, you know, take the time. That's because we make it another thing on our checklist. But in reality, it can just be five minutes. Right. Like something that I started to do very simply when I, when I got into business and I was feeling overwhelmed and I knew I wasn't making enough time for myself is I stopped at lunchtime. I made myself stop when I was working and I went and sat outside on the veranda and listened to nature and I had a cup of tea or something, you know, to eat and I made 10 minutes. Like we can all find 10 minutes, but what we do in our head is we make it oh my God, it's just another thing on my checklist that I've got to do when it doesn't have to be an hour. No one's saying go and meditate in the lotus position for the next hour. We can take 10 minutes and just go and stand on the grass outside yes. and just feel the breeze or feel the sunshine or 
like nature is an incredible balancer for, mm. you know, when we're in overwhelm and we're going up to too busy, um, yeah, I can't do it. So yeah, that would be my tip is like, even if it's five minutes a day, like put it in, like find time to go and sit with a cup of tea outside. Yep. I love that advice so much. It's something that I do. I practice every day as well. Go outside. Hopefully it's sunny. If it's not, it doesn't matter. I put a jacket on and go and sit outside. The dog will come with me. We'll just have a moment. I'll be able to eat. Just be one with myself and my thoughts and, you know, not necessarily try not to think about all the things that I need to do that afternoon, but just, you know, enjoy that moment. The other time that I sneak in as well, Sandy, is first thing in the, well, not first thing in the morning, but after I've, you know, got breakfast ready for people and lunches and done all of that sort of thing, I have my cup of green tea in the lounge room. Once again, the dog comes in and um, sits with me, just, you know, relaxes with me. But it's that taking time of having that cup of tea. It just makes a difference to my day. It makes such a huge difference. And I just really encourage all my listeners to really think about the, those moments that you can be still and you can be, you know, just one with your thoughts. And it doesn't, ha- like Sandy said, it doesn't have to be a thing on your to-do list. It can just be a part of your day. This has been an amazing discussion so far on the soul side and spirit side of business. Let's just take a, a switch to the rational side for a second and talk to me, Sandy, about what do you think might be one of the most important rational things to think about when you're running a business to make sure that you have a profitable business and a business that you love. Yeah, (laughs) this is such a a, a subject that I just love talking about because obviously I've got that finance background and, and I quite often will say to people, you know, like what are the three main reasons that you get in, you've got into business and financial freedom and financial well-being or profitability is usually in those three. Hmm. And then I'll say, okay, so how is your business doing, you know, from a financial perspective? Like, what are your numbers, whatever? And like nine out of 10 people won't even be able to respond because they, they, they don't want to pay attention to it because for some reason, you know, we get it in our minds that it's just too complicated. And I, and I blame the accounting profession to some extent. We've come up with all these words and we make everything so complicated. You know, or maybe your math teacher told you in grade six that you're no good at math. And so now you've decided that finance is out for you. But if, if financial freedom is important in your business, then it's important to understand your numbers. Because without understanding what those numbers are saying about your business, you can't grow from there. Like you're just kind of flailing around. It's like swimming doggy paddle in your business for the next mm. 10 years. Where I think it's, and it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be money in and money out. It's that simple. Like it doesn't have to, you don't need to know about ratios and depreciation and asset write-offs and all those other terms. If you just understand how money is flowing into your business and what you're spending it on, that's, that's the equation, right? That's the goal right there. And then you can make decisions knowing, okay, like I'm making $8,000 this month and I'm spending four on, you know, expenses. If I want to get to that magic, um, 10 number, I need to go and find three more clients. Like it breaks it down into achievable steps instead of going, I have no idea what's going on in my business from a finance perspective. I know I haven't really taken much money out, but I'm loving what I'm doing and how I'm serving others. And my question to people is always, well, how are you serving yourself? How is your business serving you? Wow. That's, that's, that can be quite a, you know, daunting question to to answer as well. It can be a very daunting question, but I love how you, you mentioned that, you know, unless you know your numbers, unless you know at a very simple level, what's coming in and what's come, going out, you can never get to your goals, whatever that may be in a monetary sense. Like I threw out 10K months in a six-figure business before. And a lot of people say, oh, yes, that's what I want. You said, is that re- really what you want? But if it is really what you want and, you know, what you can actually buy with that money, how are you going to get to that 10K? What does that actually look like? And if you aren't looking at your numbers, I can hear from what you're saying that it's just, you know, you're just kind of guessing. You're kind of just stumbling around in the dark because you don't understand the actions that you need to take in order to hit the number that you want to hit. Yeah, absolutely. And for a lot of people, and I'll give you yeah, just a 
your, you know, your listeners a quick tip. Don't choose 10. Don't choose 20. Don't choose 50. Because in our mind, mindset, we make that a really big deal, right? So choose 11, choose 9, choose 13, choose something else. Cause, and then our brain is not in this, oh my God, it's like 10K or it's 50K or, you know, and so that's just a little like trick that I use for people is to like choose something else. Like it's like a bypassing that, you know, craziness of 10K or bigger businesses. But like, if it's really important to you, like if the money, if, you know, the financials is really important to you, understanding it is the key, isn't it? Like and for us, it's like, how do we actually, how do we achieve it? Like, how do we get there? I think it's, for me, I just, I mean, I love, finances and so you know I understand that it's really daunting for a lot of people um and I totally get that but it is a focus and you know you know one of my favorite things is you know your focus creates your reality so if you're not focused on how you're going to you know what you want out of your business from a financial perspective then it's not even in your radar you're not making decisions to get there either Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with your content as well. Once you have a focus, once you have that objective, then you will do the action to get there. And once you start doing the action, that gains the momentum and the traction as well. Love that. Love that. So we've spoken about the soul and the spirit. We've spoken about the rational side of running a successful business. Is there anything else that can really help us feel supported and create that financially freedom business that we, that we desire? Yeah, I love community and collaboration. They're like two of my big uh, cornerstones of business because, you know, when you're out there running your business, doing all the things, it can get quite lonely and it can feel overwhelming to actually be doing everything. And so to actually have someone to bounce ideas off or to feel supported or just to be able to ask questions um, or just to even have a cup of coffee on a bad day, you know, like when things have all gone pear shaped, uh, just, you know, it's worth its weight in gold and like joining a community or being part of a business community or any community really where you can be yourself and feel supported is, yeah, that's gold for me in business. And I've been incredibly lucky to have some support over the years and yeah you know it's almost like a little business sisterhood isn't it it's yeah, it. yeah no it truly is I I have to say that connection and community uh, happen to be two of my top three values so I'm with you on this one I think it's really important um, for us to feel connected to something bigger than than just ourselves we are often solopreneurs and we're stuck at home often not you though the digital nomad lifestyle but you know we're often working from home alone so we don't often have people that we can bounce ideas off and I find that the the most the most beneficial thing about having a group of biz buddies or a community around you to support you is to help you out of those moments of decision drama because that's yeah, they're really big times where you just go, I can't make a decision. I don't know which direction to take. And when you sit in the drama of it, that, that making that decision, it can just really become overwhelming. So do you have any ideas on if someone is feeling like that, if they're feeling a little bit alone, not feeling supported, not having a community around them, where they could start with finding people or finding the community that, that suits them? Yeah, it's a little bit tricky, that one, isn't it? Because I think you you have to be realistic enough to know that you need to try a few different places before yeah. you come across your people. Um, and you probably know that yourself. You've probably done networking events yourself where you've gone, okay, yes, uh, let's move on and <laughs> get something else. So I think not getting discouraged when you start, whether that's like joining a Facebook group that feels aligned to you to start with, or going to your own local networking group. For me, I love women and I love women in business. So I tend to find sort of women only events because that suits me. Like in my corporate world, I've, you know, I've worked with a lot of masculine businesses. So, you know, when I'm in my other way, I'm looking for that feminine, you know, connection for me personally, but you, you know, you know yourself best. And so, yeah, local networking events is a really good place to start. 
and also Facebook groups. Um, and finding the courage if you meet someone who you really like connect with. It's a little bit like being adult school, like going up and saying, Hey, I really love what you said about such and such. I feel like we're quite aligned. You want to catch up for a cup of coffee or, you know, and get to know them a little bit more, or do you want to do a chat over, um, you know, over Zoom or something, if it's a Facebook group. Mm. Uh, like some of my best friends I've met in other courses, some women I've never actually met in real life. <laughs> it's the online world is amazing. And um, I've been very, very blessed to have some great support in my life now. But yes, I've met people through Facebook groups, but also courses and um, yeah, ne networking events. What about you, Mel? Yes, I would I would say yes to all of those things. I would say my bestest biz buddies have have actually come through Facebook groups. Just I don't know, it is just like making friends in real life, really, isn't it? You know, you feel a connection with someone, you feel as though your values are aligned and your perspectives are aligned. And so you automatically become attracted to them and what they're they're talking about. I would also encourage people to think about how they can build their own networks by reaching out to people and not being, I know it's, it's easy for me to say, don't be scared to reach out to people, but just to be courageous. There are very few people that will say, no, I don't want to spend 15 minutes with you online, just getting to know you and, and your business. <laughs> if they do, I mean, you can just run a mile. Like they're not, they're not worth knowing. But generally speaking, I would say that most people are very open to that. So if there is someone that you feel really drawn to or connected to them, then reach out to them. Just say hi, even if it's a DM first and, and then, you know, you get to know each other. Like just make that first step. I know it can be hard, but I just marvel, you know, at, at, at our children. They have this amazing ability to not worry about rejection too much, I think. So my daughter, who, who is 15, so she's not, she's not young, came home from a performance practice a couple of weeks ago. It was a new group of people. She didn't know anyone. And I said to her, how did you go? Did you enjoy it? Yes, I enjoyed it. She goes, I made a few, few new friends. I was like, wow, that's, that's fantastic. And she had actually even started a group chat with them. Like I know that the children of today are very technologically ad ad advanced in terms of what they can do, but I was just really impressed with that. And I thought to myself, you know, how can I bring that kind of energy to the connections that I'm making, just be a little bit more courageous though. I love that. Sandy, thank you so much for all of this wisdom that you have given us today. I know that if someone's looking to start a profitable and successful business that you have a free resource that you can share, I will pop that in the show notes, but you just want to uh, give a quick rundown of what that might be. Yeah, I've got a, um, like a little ebook, which is want to build a profitable and successful business and seven easy steps because we do make business so hard, right? <laughs> we, we like to overcomplicate things. And so it just gives you an, uh, like the seven key areas to look at for yourself when you, if you're starting a business or you're feeling overwhelmed, because quite often when we first get into business, we're like full of enthusiasm and then, you know, a little bit down the, the track, you're like the wheels start to fall off and you need to come back and re recenter yourself and build a really strong foundation. Um, so it's really just to give you a good starting point to what to look at for in your business and, you know, what are those important steps. Fabulous. So I'll make sure that I put the link for that in the show notes so everyone can go and grab a copy of that ebook. Now, Sandy, I am all about women owning and using their superpowers. So I would love to ask you, what is your superpower? Yeah, look, I really feel like my superpower is being able to take the two worlds of the practical and the energetic, bring them together and really, you know, build that sort of holistic business that's not only out there in the world providing a service to other people, but it's also providing a service to you. Like it's fulfilling you as much as you're out there, you know, helping other people. So I, I really feel like I can make that connection really well. And I love doing it. I love bringing the practical side of my brain and the intuition and the energetic together. Beautiful. And you have aptly demonstrated that today as well. So definitely your superpower. Before we finish up, is there any uh, final parting words of wisdom that you have? 
Yeah. I, you know, like I think I mentioned it early on, but I, you know, I like to come back and, and to clarify, like, it's so important to like, to really enjoy your business, enjoy what you're doing, enjoy the lessons that you're learning from it and not be so fixated on having a 10K month or a six figure business. Like just like, is it for me, I always come back and say all the beautiful people I've met while I've been building my business, you know, all the things that I've learned on a personal level and a professional level, like all the things that my business has delivered to me has been in the doing of the business. It hasn't been in getting to the six figure mark or the seven figure mark or so just enjoy it. Have fun. Be a bit playful with your business. Don't take yourself so seriously. Don't take your business too seriously. And just, yeah, make it a, an enjoyable process. Enjoy the ride. I love that. I love that message. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Sandy, and sharing your wisdom with my listeners. I truly appreciate you being here. Thanks, Mel. I've absolutely loved it. Thanks so much for listening. That's it for another week. To get more powerful content in your life, make sure you're following along on socials. My handle is at Meld Business. And just in case you're wondering, the groovy music for this podcast was created by Just Here on SoundCloud. I'd also be super grateful if you took a moment to rate and review this podcast so more amazing women like you can experience the power of content. And if you're like, hell Mel, stop talking. I'm ready to work with you now. Here's how we can work some powerful content magic together. Firstly, come and join the content effect, my membership inspiring women with service-based businesses to ditch the content chaos and start creating standout content that gets you noticed and makes sales. You can join us by using the link in the show notes or just Google the content effect. The second way we can work together is via my one-on-one packages. We can create a sustainable content strategy or start to build out your client journey. It's up to you. Hop on over to meldbusinessservices.com.au forward slash services to find out more. Until next time, have a beautiful week and embrace the power of your content.